<coughs> Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Liu Kui, Director of International Cooperation Division, Katas. Thank you and welcome to attend the side event. It's a great honor for us to have Sablaji Lamasri, FAO Senior Agriculture Officer, Head of the Research and Extension Unit, Office for Innovation. Yu Guodao, Vice President of Qatar's here. And we are honored to have eight experts here. And they are Professor Hao Weiping Kass, Dr. Laurent Sander, Katia, Mr. John Button William, Alliance of Biodiversity International and SIA, Mr. Claire Carey, Kabi, Dr. Ikola Amhad Khan, University of Agriculture, Faisalabad, Pakistan, Mr. Martin Akhan, Ashmab, Mr. Wang Miao, CG COC Group, China, Mr. Li Hantang, Katas. Welcome all of you and thank you again for your support. The side event was organized by Katas and CAS with support and guidance from TAP. The main purpose of this side event is to discuss ways and paths to enhance the capacity of agricultural innovation systems. We have raised the issue of enhancing the capacity of agricultural innovation systems through industrial education research integration. Of course, we don't have to stick to the election. Relevant discussions are welcome. This is the agent of the meeting. Can you see it? Okay. This is the agent for the side event. Uh, and we are take it item by item. Now, I'd like to invite Mr. Savaraj Lamasami to deliver an opening remarks. Please, Mr. Lamasami, please. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Q. Liu. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all presenters uh, as well as the participants. Welcome to the sixth side event of the eighth uh, TAP Partners Assembly. First of all, uh, please allow me to thank the Chinese Academy for Tropical Agriculture Sciences and uh, the Chinese Academy of Agricultural Sciences for organizing this uh, side event as part of the Tropical Agriculture Platform Partners Assembly Week and also linking to the partnership between FAO and CATAS as well as CAS. Agricultural innovation system has a strong potential to enhance economic performance of farming and to contribute to agricultural sustainability by improving synergies and complementarity among various actors within the agri-food systems. Industry, research, and education and their partnerships are increasingly used in agricultural innovation systems to leverage finance, enhance efficiency, and to improve the adoption of innovation to foster wider and faster diffusion. Linkages of industry, research, 
partnerships are viewed as the main interactions required to strengthen the agricultural innovation systems. Integration of industry, education, and research has a prominent role to tap into the potential of agricultural innovation systems in developing innovative agricultural solutions and technologies for increasing the productivity and the income. Chinese Academy of Agricultural Sciences has pioneered the integration of industry, education, and research in agricultural innovation and development for many years, and has thereby accumulated a rich experience in strengthening the capacity of agricultural innovation systems through the integration of industry, education, and research. I believe this experience will be an important reference for the partners of the Tropical Agriculture Platform and for our own work in promoting AAS in developing and strengthening industry, research, and education partnership and linkages. Here, I would like to highlight the need for strengthening the multi-stakeholder mechanisms for the AAS, which involves research institutions contributing to the advancement of technology and the development of new innovative models of extension and advisory services and the industry, all aiming to customize the technology and mass production and to help wider scaling and agricultural education. That's, that's the role of the industry. With respect to agricultural education that supports to produce necessary human capital to match with the needs of both industry as well as the research. This unique interaction needs guidance and new ways of stakeholder engagement involving diverse actors in a complex innovation processes. To make this agricultural innovation system sustainable, policies and incentives should be put in place to continuously building up the multifaceted capacities to promote creation, application, and diffusion of knowledge and technologies to the smallholder farmers. Katas, as the only national research institution for tropical agriculture in China, and CAS as the most prestigious national agriculture research institution, have been supporting the integration of industry, education, and research to promote the scientific and technological innovation capacity in agriculture. We are pleased to inform you that FAO and CATAS have an ongoing memorandum of understanding has specific activities related to mutual exchange and sharing of experiences through the tropical agriculture platform. We, the TAP partners, are looking forward to listening to the achievements and lessons learned by CATAS, CAS, SEAT, and CABI, and also to specific case studies from Pakistan in strengthening industry, research, and education linkages within the approach of agricultural innovation systems. On behalf of TAB and its partners, I thank you for choosing the TAB Partner Assembly to share your valuable experiences and wish you all a successful webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sauraj Lamasami. Many of the ideas you mentioned are very enlightening to us and have a uh, guiding lower in improving the capacity of the agricultural innovation system. Thank you very much. Then I'd like to invite Dr. Liu Guodao to make a welcome remarks.
Eso es. Es held with the strong support of all the participants. On behalf of Qatar, I would like to welcome you to the event and thank all the experts who are going to make presentation. Capacity development for agriculture innovation system is of great importance to spark sustainable agriculture development, especially to realize the UN Sustainable Development Global 2030. Agriculture as a complex and equate system is driven by innovation and other factors. Industry, education and research are basic factors of the continued a constitute of a to the aids integrate the three element help to enhance the innov in no innovative capacity hence the further developing agriculture the integrate development of industry education research is a good approach to promote science and the technology innovation. The initiative has been long explored by China. This great development is the field industrial development by scientific research and education based on industrial demands, which share the same goal of the city for AIDS and its effect has to improve the AIDS. Carlos has been practiced as the three in one integrated development over the years and achieved a remarkable result in the area, including the comprehensive control of cluster located desertification in Guizhou. Let's write in mango industry in Panjihua and spec and the beverage industry which combine scientific research, popularization and tourism. We have developed the high quality late ripening mango industry zone, the Xinlong in China. There's a several model of complex control of cultural loki Certification that can be promoted globally. Through this side event, we hope to further communicate with experts around the world in continuous explore the improving the ways to develop AIDS so that some successful model can be promoted and applied in more places thereby contributing the global sustainable agriculture development and the poverty and hunger reduction. Finally, I wish the side event great success. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Liu Guodao. And uh, thank you for your interview in your aesthetic speech, which was very instructive. Now, let me talk about my views on enhancing the capacity of agricultural innovation systems through industrial education research integration. Mm -hmm. This uh, <clears throat> discussion topic is mainly based on three aspects of the problem. Uh, the first, uh, agricultural innovation system. Capacity improvement needs a set of scientific indicators to measure whether it can promote 
industrial development should be regarded as one of the most important indicators. Uh, second, from scientific and uh, technological achievement to economic benefit is always an important subject in the field of scientific research and also a difficult problem faced by high tech enterprises. Uh, said, simply adding industries, education and research together is difficult to form a real resultant force. There are three ways to think about these problems. First, industry education research is the three elements of agricultural innovation system. And the improvement of system capacity needs the three elements to support and promote each other. Second, the combination of production, education, and research is a simple addition. It's difficult to form a community of goals and interests. The integration of industry, education, and research means interdependence, which means a more inseparable pattern and reform and innovation of systems and mechanisms. Therefore, it's necessary to change from the previous combination of industry, education, and research into integration of industry, education, and research. That means IIER. Qatar has done many years of explosion and practice in the integration of industry, education, and research, and has produced some successful cases. Qatar is the center of research and uh, development for tropical agriculture in China. It established in 1954, administrated by Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Affairs, with three main campuses distributed in Hainan and Guangdong province. And uh, Qatar has 14 institutes 4,600 staffs and 4,500 hectares of land for scientific research. And the spice beverage crops institute, research uh, spice beverage crops research institute is the typical case of IIER. The institute is located in Guanyin, Xinlong, Hainan province. Innovative put forward the Trinity development model of scientific research, product development, and popular science demonstration. After 23 years of continuous innovative development, the Institute has become a comprehensive tropical botanical garden integrating tropical plant resources conservation, technology demonstration, leisure tourism, science education, and other functions. It has uh, awarded the honorary, honorary titles of National 4A Level Tourism Area. National Agricultural Tourism Demonstration Site, National Young Education Base, and so on. In the past 10 years, it has received nearly 10 million tourists from home and abroad, earned nearly 700 million yuan in revenue from its achievements, provided 600 local jobs, provided sufficient funding for the scientific research and achieved good economic, social, and ecological benefit. In a nutshell, the success of Institute lies in the Chinality model 
long-term persistent efforts and a good external policy environment. That's all. Thank you very much. And any question or queries? Okay, and uh, let's move on to the next agent. Welcome Professor Hao Weiping to give the report. Welcome, Professor Hao. Okay, so, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, it's okay. clear. Thank you, Mr. Chair Liu uh, Kui. It gave me, gives me a great honor to attend today's Type set event hosted by Katas at the CAS. Uh, first of all, on behalf of, behalf of the CAS, as a co organizer of this event, I would like to extend my warmest welcome to all the guests and the participants. And uh, I would like to express my uh, thanks to. Uh, Secretary of uh, TAP and uh, all the partners for your concrete support for this uh, event. So the agricultural innovation system is a core system that aims to increase food security, e ecological security, and farms income through enhancing the capacity and uh, efficiency of continuous innovation of science and technology, and uh, integrating resources and the innovation of mechanism. It's generally idea is a scientific layout, optimization of resources, innovation of mechanism, and enhancement of capacity. Chinese Academy of Agriculture Sciences, in short, CAS, as a national Comprehensive Agricultural Scientific Research Organization with this responsibility for carrying out both basic and applied research as well as research into new technology impacting agriculture has been working closely with international partners to de de develop the innovation capacity both for Chinese agriculture and uh, for other developing countries. So I would like to take this opportunity to share some practice and cases on international cooperation for agricultural innovation capacity in CAS. First, develop impactful research project to enhance international cooperation for agricultural innovation capacity. CAS is dedicated to solve common problems facing global agricultural development through innovation and international cooperation with the various partners, particularly by jointly undertaking research projects in the frontier or key areas in agricultural development. In 2020, CAS launched International Science Technology Innovation Program, in short, is CAS TIP, aiming to focus on global research frontiers and the tackle major issues that may significantly influence the global agricultural development. It calls for and attracts leading scientists and research teams and the institute from, world, uh, from uh, worldwide to join and work together. CAS has already invested 10 million US dollars for the first stage 2020 to 20. 25. Four key areas are designed for the first stage, including molecular design breeding, smart agriculture, agrobiosafety, and the, the agricultural waste recycling. Apart from CAS self funding program, like about mentioned, we also uh, implement. FAO China Substance Cooperation Program that contributes to improve agricultural innovation 
capacity in developing countries. For, for example, at the request from Kenya, Ghana, Myanmar, CAS scientists and FAO experts jointly developed proposal and applied for the China FAO SASAS Cooperation Trust Fund regional program, stressing international cooperation for sustainable management of four army war. In this project, a radar-based monitoring and early warning system of migratory pest developed by Institute of Plant Protection of CAS and the mutual bio biology control based IPM technology on maize uh, insect pest will be laid a foundation for technology transfer from China to target country. Another example is a triangular project called Global Low Carbon Tea, Triangular Cooperation in Tea Value Chain in Kenya, co coordinated by FAO the carbon neutral tea production methodology developed by the Institute of Environment and Sustainable Development in Agriculture and the Tea Research Institute of CAS. Under the experience from German Corporation for International Cooperation, GIS, in energy efficiency interventions in Kenya tea sector are incorporated to address climate change and build a more sustainable tea value chain. So the second I want to share is to provide international platform for policy dialogue and mainstreaming in agricultural science and technology innovation. Since 20, 2006, CAS has launched the Global Forum for leaders of agricultural science and technology, in short, GLAST, together with FAO, CGIAR, and IAEA, aiming to gather leaders for agricultural science and technology of countries, international organizations, and the pr private sector to share experience and put putting forward measures on major issues. GLAST represents a practical endeavor to establish a shared community of agricultural science and technology innovation for cooperation and win-win outcome. Next year, the seventh is GLAST, uh, GLAST is scheduled to, build, to be held in China and we welcome all the stakeholders and friends to join. Hopefully we can meet face to face on site in Beijing. The third is a joint platform building, such as the joint lab, joint research center, and the innovation center. We have established seven, over 70 joint labs with different uh, partners. So this year, CAS has been working closely with the FAO headquarters and FAO chair office in establishing FAO CAS Innovation Center, which adopted a more systematic, same specific and result targeted framework to integrate the previous fragmented of projects, agreements, and other forms of cooperation among 34 institutes of CAS and various branches of AAO into a better organized cooperation mechanism to be jointly co coordinated by FAO and the CAS. The FAO CAS Innovation Center will focus on areas like crop production technology, digital agriculture and information technology, climate change and disaster reduction, and uh, water, soil, resource, plant and uh, animal health. It's centuries. Also, including the knowledge and the information dissemination and some cross section field, such as the cap capacity building for women and the youth. The FAO CAS Innovation Center will be a platform for cooperative research, technical exchange, personal training, and advisory service. They will fully 
play to the advantage of FAO as a class in policy, technology, talent, information, and funding around the UN SDGs. The fourth is carry after cooperation, promotion, and capacity building via integration of industry education research, IER, with the support from NGO, such as the foundations and the private sector. So this is more re relevant to our themes of this event. So take, taking cars, uh, Bear uh, Melinda Gates Foundation Cooperative Project as an example. CAS and uh, Gates Foundation have conducted several programs together. The project brings super rights for the resource poor of Asia and Africa, jointly supported by the uh, Gates Foundation, has gone nearly 11 years since its uh, initiation in 2008, the project has sent nearly 6,000 elite rice lines to mass of the target countries. So up to end of 2018, the project has released 74 uh, green uh, super rice varieties in the 16 target Asia and Africa countries. Tremendous effort have been taken to demonstrate and upscale these released green super rice varieties by NAS and the agro business of the target countries. So for long-term benefit of target countries, tremendous effort have been taken in project to build capacity of target countries. This including acad uh, uh, academic degree education based uh, uh, depend on the based on uh, uh, class graduate school mostly for uh, PhD education. Uh, about uh, a total of forty students from forty of target Asia and Africa countries have been. Uh, past the PhD uh, degree education. The project also provides uh, short-term training for breeding technologies, about nearly 300 scientists from 15 countries, making this advanced breeding technology more widely used in different target countries. We hold more than 40 training course, courses for more than 2,000 trainees from farmer communities, from seed industries, uh, in the seed production and the crop manager technique of the new varieties. So in uh, 2019 and 2021, uh, another two projects were uh, granted by uh, Gates Foundation especially support the achievement of enhanced China's contributions to NAS with focus on improving rice seeds system of Western Africa countries through joint efforts on rice research, development, and the support on seeds production, distribution, and extension service. The, 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 another one is uh, mainly for uh, establish uh, organizational structure, reform and the operation mechanism of early warning system for major crop pests. So those about measured for modality are typical practices and the cases that the class improve its research innovative capacity through international cooperation. Finally, I would like to set for TAPS Secretary uh, and all members to provide a platform for strengthening the cooperation on information and uh, experience sharing. To move further, CAS would like to work with all TAP members to explore a more system, uh, systematic mechanism for information sharing and uh, 
innovative capacity building. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Professor Hao. CAS is China's leading agricultural academy and uh, has achieved many important achievements. And thank you for your magnificent report. Now, let's move on to the next agent. Welcome Dr. Lowland Sadder to give the report, please.
event uh, where I want to show my contributions and what Cathy has to offer in innovations in breeding, agroforestry and education in the coffee sector. I will begin with breeding and first it's important to say that the base of our work is a, an important in vivo coffee collection that we have here in Turrialba, Costa Rica where we have more than 2,000 accessions of, of coffee, you know? and is considered one of the most important collections in the Latin America and the Caribbean region. Thanks to this collection, we performed a, a lot of crosses among varieties, and in the last years, we produced improved materials, like the famous uh, F1 hybrids of coffee. You know? At the moment, we are distributing Centro Americano, Milenio, Esperanza, Cassiopeia, and Excelencia, but also other commercial varieties. <laughs> These varieties are highly productive, are tolerant to pests and diseases, and have excellent quality of, of coffee. No? And the potential yields are more than 65 qu uh, quintas per hectare of green coffee, and these materials can produce from 30 to 50% more than traditional varieties in agroforestry systems. Uh, these yields are very important, taking into account that the yields in the region are very low, from 15 to 25 kilograms uh, quintals per hectare of, of green coffee. <laughs> Thanks to this collection, we are also distributing a, a high cap quality varieties of coffee, like this geisha coffee, which is a very nice uh, beverage. This material was preserved in Katia since many years ago, and then we started to distribute this material because we found very good characteristics, and at the moment is a, a high-priced coffee and is benefiting a lot of farmers in, in the region, especially in, in Panama. <laughs> and for propagating these materials, we are also developing innovations like uh, techniques of massive propagation. No? We, we start in, la in, laboratories, in laboratories to produce mother plants, then rapid multiplications from routines and then transfer to massive uh, nurseries. And that's uh, how farmers can access to these materials at reasonable costs. Another achievement of our breeding is that we already distributed more than 20 million plants in the region. We already have uh, about um, a new 100 uh, hybrids in evaluation in the fields. So in the coming future, we expect to release more more promising materials. And we have also essays of wild coffee accessions we can which can produce uh, high quality characteristics. Uh, by the next 10 years, uh, we are planning to develop also materials with adaptation to climate change. And Cathy will be part uh, of an important global genetic improvement initiative by the World Coffee uh, Research. You know, it could be a breeding factory for the region. All of these materials are, are promoted in agroforestry systems. Now, Cathy is a pioneer in agroforestry, and we always promote these kind of systems with, in, in combination with vegetation because we believe that this is the best way to produce sustainable crops. No? Or, or, and for instance, through agroforestry, we can contribute to the conservation of biodiversity, but also can contribute to other ecosystem services like carbon sequestration, soil quality, regulation of pests and diseases. No? In that sense, for instance, we have these long-term coffee agroforestry essays at the moment with more than 20 years of results. No? In, in this essay in Turrialba, Costa Rica, we are combining different types of management from highly organic management to highly conventional management in combination with different types of trees, timber trees or leguminous trees. And in total, we are testing like 20 different systems from where we can uh, find innovations and findings to uh, transmit to farmers. All of the, the results and recommendations that we obtain from our essays and from other projects are also uh, tested and promoted in, in coffee demonstration plots. At the moment, we have more than 300 uh, farms working uh, with us through regional projects. Better varieties 
also demonstrate that it's possible to obtain good yields more than the average in the, in the region. And, and we have also the possibility to show new tools, for instance, pruning tools uh, to have a regulated, regulated shade in the coffee systems. We have also other projects uh, related to innovations, for instance, this project where we are testing uh, different varieties in combination with different types of pruning. You know? This is a very important and key practice to sustain the coffee production across years. You know? So at the moment we, have, we are working in eight countries, we have a network of more than 40 coffee farms where we are testing 16 varieties in combination with 30 types of pruning. So in the coming future, we will offer new innovation on how to prune coffee uh, and which is the most appropriate pruning for a given variety. Apart from this agroforestry and, and agronomic practices that we are doing in the region, we are always developing scientific research to demonstrate the sustainability and, and try to achieve good balances of trade-offs between ecosystem, ecosystem services in coffee plantations and other crops also in agroforestry. Uh, for instance, from recent research, we, we know that it is possible to produce coffee with a shade cover up to 60%. No? With this coverage, uh, coffee still responds to fertilization and farmers can achieve good yields. No? So it's a good message that it's possible to combine coffee with shade and, and have good benefits. And we, all, we, we also do relationships between ecosystem services, for instance, relationships between coffee yield and carbon sequestration. And by doing that, we can always identify promising systems that can, that can achieve good coffee volumes, but also good carbon sequestration. We can learn from these systems and, and transmit these learnings to other farmers. Uh, with farmers, with education, we promote different methodologies to encourage these new varieties and agroforestry systems. And for that, we have field methodologies, but we are also starting to use uh, technology, which is always part of innovation, no? like the use of drones to map trees in, in, in coffee plantations and use this kind of uh, software like ShameMotion, which is a free software developed by Katia where a user can simulate how the shade is going to move and how much shade you can provide to a coffee or other uh, co uh, system with agroforestry. You, know? you can propose an, a, a new design, uh, uh, diversified system or a simple system, or you can illustrate here uh, a given existing coffee plantation and based on the results of the software, you can do adjustments in the management of the shade canopies. In education with farmers, we have a, an extensive experience in training uh, people, no? both producers and, and technicians. Uh, for instance, only in the five years, we, we trained thousands of farmers and thousands uh, of, of technicians in at least in seven countries in, in the region. We like very much this methodology of farmer field schools, where we teach farmers in, in their very farms, their very, their very uh, uh, communities, and we are also starting to combine this type of, of teaching with the use of application in smartphones. You know, nowadays, there are several applications of coffee uh, that farmers can consult to improve their management. In the informal education, we are part of these important international courses or international diplomados, like this Caficultura Innovadora, for instance. No? Uh, we have already structured all of the of the teaching model for caficultura, where we can always promote more innovations in agronomy, agroforestry, and quality of coffee. These models are are ready to be implemented with more people, and we always have a, a, a postgraduate uh, school here in Katia where we offer master and PhD programs related to agroforestry, environment, and forests. And in these programs, there are always research in, in coffee. No? For instance, in the last years, uh, more than 30 uh, master theses on coffee were produced. No? And we are also part of platforms of research like Agroforesta, where we gather 
Katie, uh, Sirat, Biodiversity, Sea, World Coffee Research, and other institutions. No, so we have a good group of scientists work, working in coffee, cacao, and other agroforestry systems. And with this, for instance, we produce more than 100 papers on coffee, and we have a lot of participants in these platforms and in courses. Finally, I want to show this, uh, with, which are materials that Cathy offers, no? from scientific papers on coffee to technical manuals on coffee for technicians and also specific materials for farmers with, with simple language and, and good illustrations to transmit innovations and uh, abilities. So that was my presentation. There is my contact. My name is Rolando Cerda. My email is, is that. And we hope you can write me to explore uh, maybe good ways to join collaboration to promote. Thanks. Thanks, Dr. Lauren. And I apologize for the <laughs> network failure. The report was so unfair, uh, wonderful that we could smell the coffee across the screen. Also, Dr. Lorendo could not report online due to the time difference. He still recorded a video for us. Thank you again. And the next agent, welcome Mr. John Button William to give the report. Mr. John, please. Thank you very much. Um, yes, hello everyone, and thank you very, very much for the opportunity to speak today. Um, I can give you a little background on my team at SEAP. I'm part of the data-driven sustainability team, and we aim to provide stakeholders with tailored products and services using remote sensing, machine learning, <clears throat> and modelling on topics of ecosystem services, climate, and land cover monitoring. Uh, we aim to have impact by engaging with private enterprise and to develop new revenue models that can sustain services and fund research beyond the lifetime of specific projects. Uh, today, I'll talk a little bit about uh, understanding industry needs and how this is driving the research program in our team. I'll talk about how we identify research areas with potential to develop into services and products. And I'll also talk about how we define an industry problem at a very specific level to guide our research and solutions development. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, finally, I'll give an example of a user need driving a specific research program. I really love this example of the seatbelt development uh, because in this case, the seatbelt developed by Bolin designed, it wasn't actually the safest there were other designs that could have restrained a passenger better in the event of an accident. But the advantage of his design was that it was also comfortable and convenient. That meant people would actually wear their seatbelts. The problem Bolin solved wasn't what is the safest seatbelt in an accident. The problem he solved was what is the safest seatbelt that is comfortable and convenient to the user. Uh, you might ask, how is this relevant to research in agriculture and in our case, working with coffee companies? I think the point here is that we could have the best science in the world, but unless the science solves a problem that matters to the user, it won't be adopted. And without adoption, there will be no impact. It's important to understand that our projects start with the science we start by identifying an area we have expertise in that is close to ready for application. So here you can see we reviewed the technological readiness and market readiness of existing research within SEAP. And this set our priorities for exploring opportunities for product and service development. Uh, we are very focused on remote sensing and machine learning. This is an existing capability within SEAP that we see has potential to be applied especially to the coffee and cocoa industries. We know companies in the sector have existing sustainability commitments focused on deforestation, protected areas and carbon, and that those companies have issues where data and metrics can be difficult to collect. So we can see that our remote sensing capability 
could help solve problems and give us a competitive advantage over other solutions. Our core capability is using machine learning to create land cover maps and to identify difficult to see crops, including coffee and cocoa. So here you see recent mapping of Vietnam where our target crop is coffee and we use Sentinel-1 and 2 data, and we also use high resolution images and human image interpreters to create data points or ground truth that feeds our machine learning process. So it's an iterative process. We produce the ground truth or training data with human input. Uh, we then run the machine learning system to produce the map. So we believe this capability is a world leading, but the big question for us is that to have impact, we have to understand what problems can we solve with this technology and who is it useful for? Our first step in understanding the opportunities was to review the whole coffee value chain and to start to identify where we can add value. Um, I can give two examples of the learnings from this process. Um, there are actors in the value chain where we don't see a market for example, the certification process includes third party auditors, but we learned that the business model of these third party auditors is to be paid on, an, on a cost plus margin basis. So the auditors don't have an interest in using remote sensing to lower the cost of their service. On the other hand, coffee roasters who you might uh, think are quite removed from the sourcing and growing of coffee, are often actually vertically integrated with their supply chains and they are potential users of remote sensing solutions. So once we identified the actors and levels where remote sensing could add value, we engaged much more closely with potential users. Uh, we spend time with users, and we shadow them to learn by observing their existing processes and to see their existing systems in action. One of the early learnings from this uh, uh, was that remote sensing can only address a very narrow range of the criteria and costs of certification. For example, remote sensing can identify deforestation risk of certification candidates, but it can't touch the requirements around child labour, chemical use, farmer training and so on, and administrative costs of certification. Therefore, the impact of remote sensing on the cost of certification will be low and the value to the user will be low. So to define the problem to be solved, we use what we call user stories to give a very specific and concise definition of a problem. So the more specific the user story is, uh, the better. And it's always based on actual observations of users, looking at the details of projects and processes, and it involves multiple interviews with users. So the user story here, it's a key to guide our solutions development. It's a point of reference for the deliverables for a solution and also for our research goals. Um, you can see here the user story has four parts. Um, I haven't included it, but we will name a specific user. It could be a company or even a role within a specific company. Um, it will say what's painful about the current situation, describe an outcome the user wants and say why they want it. So this is one example of a user story of more than 15 that we generated for the coffee project. Um, there is also an important step that I won't cover today, and that is prioritizing the user stories and deciding uh, which problems to address. Um, I should also say that the user story is a reference um, point for solutions development, but it's not the only document or the only information that we use for solutions development. We will add a lot of detail and context um, as we go ahead and develop solutions. Um, so one of the areas we identified as an opportunity were projects converting low shade coffee to high shade coffee production. Um, these projects supply and plant trees in existing coffee plots. So this is a big priority for coffee traders and roasters as a mechanism to meet uh, commitments on carbon. Um, and we also see that there's a big gap in the data available for these projects. So it's very difficult at the moment to verify that trees planted continue to grow over one or three or 10 years. And it's difficult to estimate the biomass increase. So generating this data currently requires expensive and complicated on-ground surveys and sampling. 
So the question for us becomes, uh, how can we use remote sensing and machine learning to measure the percentage of coffee and shade in coffee plots to, and to verify the project's value? Um, this is where the user need drives our research program. Um, so as part of a Master of Science, one of our team uh, will work on this problem over 12 months. Uh, she's based in uh, Cali, Columba, Columbia Public University. Um, and she's working with a unit specialising in computer vision and artificial intelligence. So the mandatory deliverable will be a thesis manuscript by the end of the year. And that work will directly feed into our ability to provide the service. So this type of prioritising prior, prioritization works well in our team, where we have a range of projects and problems uh, gener generating a list of research and development topics. Um, that are of global interest. So each of these problems represents uh, a type of challenge that can be matched to a research specialisation. Um, so in this way, we're responding to user needs and that is driving our, our research agenda in the medium term. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak today. Oh, <coughs> thank you, Mr. John. But uh, William, your report is very clear and uh, informative. The whole process value chain analysis from production to consumption and the remote sensing technology uh, are impressive. Uh, thank you. Thank you again. Thank you. Now let's move on to the next agent. Welcome, Ms. Claire Carey, to give the report. Ms. Claire. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Um, okay. I'm just going to share my screen. Can you see that okay? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, Thank you for having me here to speak today. Um, I'm Claire Curry. I work at um, CABI uh, based in the UK. Um, and I'm going to talk about digital extension advisory services. So um, in, the, in recent years, obviously there's been rapid advances in technology, which um, provides some opportunities for applying that in extension and advisory services. Um, and some what we've seen is it's been particularly interesting during COVID-19 pandemic where um, having more remote communication and ways of delivering information has been really valuable. Um, CABI and FAO carried out an assessment um, in Kenya and Uganda and found that 78% uh, of farmers accessed extension and advisory services um, using digital um, and looking at that in more detail. So of those um, people, radio was the most dominant um, and then TV for accessing that information and then mobile. So um, I've also included the numbers there because I think it's quite interesting how, um, how much lower mobile was compared to um, a communication method like radio. Um, and something that Cabby is really interested in is also making sure that if we're involved in um, some of these ways of communicating extension services, then um, it's not being done in a way that's exacerbating inequalities that already exist. So um, looking at some of those challenges, then um, there are a number of barriers to using digital um, EAS. So. Um, awareness was one of them that we found, um, access to uh, affordable data to be able to use some of those um, mobile services, um, low digital literacy, um, lack of ownership of actual devices to be able to, you know, if something was on an app, having a device that would be able to access it, um, and limited technical support for any challenges um, in using those devices. Um, and I just added a few more comments there. So what I was talking about inequalities, um, it was found that women and, and older people were more likely to report that they 
experience these challenges and barriers to use than um, than men and younger people. Um, and there was an observation that there's a need to integrate these sorts of services with also face to face. So digital um, advisory is never going to be the only thing or like it's not a silver bullet to um, the solution of increasing um, access to extension. Um, and the yeah, so the cost, the average cost for a gigabyte of data in Africa was um, 7% of uh, average monthly salaries. Um, and the smartphone costs are almost 63% of um, GNI compared to in Africa is only almost 12%. So it's, it's quite a big, important cost in that region. Um, so another thing that we're really keen to look at is, is the context of, of the use of these um, services. So in, um, you know, the policy and um, the infrastructure available in the country. So a lot of um, policies that African governments have actually do support this, um, the use of these tools, and um, that's in line with the African Union's um, strategy. Uh, and it is increasing. So at the end of 2019, 45% um, of the population in sub-Saharan Africa was subscribed to mobile services, but it's estimated that that'll reach 1 billion by 2024. So it's really um, increasing, as well as the 3G coverage, which um, in 2017 was 63% and um, increased just in that year to 70% which reached uh, 80 million um, more people. So um, it's definitely something that, you know, is improving their access, but there are still challenges around it. Um, so one of the examples I just wanted to highlight really quickly is um, uh, the use of this within uh, CABI uh, prize program. So CABI is a partner in this program, Prize stands for Pest Risk Information Service. Um, and that uses um, uh, a, a data cube, which brings in data from um, earth observation data, weather data, information about pests specifically, so like their biology, um, and uses models to then predict pest outbreaks. Um, and those forecasts of when outbreaks will happen can then be used to um, produce messaging to center farmers um, and within this particular um, partnership which was uh, made with PAD in um, Kenya they sent SMS messages using a messaging service that already exists so this um, partly comes down to and I'll touch on a few things that relate to what John was saying about the seatbelt where um, this already worked, this really worked for, um, for farmers because it's something that, you know, they already had, it was already something, it wasn't difficult for them, they already had this service. So we're using this, um, I guess, innovative um, way of getting information to them in terms of like generating forecasts, but actually how it's being delivered to them at the end is an existing service. Um, and, uh, we found that 59% of farmers changed their practices based on the recommendations that they received. And um, as a result, saw reduced um, infestation of fall armyworm and therefore increased uh, production of maize. That was just one way of delivering that information to farmers. Prize in other countries and um, with other partners also uses. Um, other communication methods based on what works for that area. So in Malawi, um, with the Farm Radio Trust, uh, radio is used. So there are definitely some challenges. Um, the literacy, particularly for women, is um, a challenge, digital literacy, so, um, and access to devices. Um, the skills in um, 
using tools and, and communicating the information um, and making sure that the content is useful to the farmers and um, so they can use it and act upon it. Um, and we yeah, try and use participatory design methods that um, look into uh, insights about the context, the, what those people need. Um, and, and so it's gonna be useful. Um, and yeah, making sure we know the farmers really well so that um, that can also be used in the design of the solution and the, co and the content. Um, and yeah, use of new, new um, ICTs and also um, traditional media. So uh, some of these things we're bringing together in our PlantWise Plus program that Kavi is um, leading and has started this year. So um, there's different components of it, but one of them, which is this purple box here, is to enhance knowledge and uptake of um, climate smart plant health practices through uh, responsive digital advisory tools. In this program, we're, we're aiming the tools at advisors rather than the farmers because of some of those challenges around um, digital literacy and um, you know, device access. It's, um, it's more practical for us to aim at some of the advisors who then are advising the farmers anyway. So the information gets passed on that way. Um, and as well as government extension, we're also aiming this at um, agri-dealers, agro-input suppliers who are often the source of um, plant health information for farmers. Um, so the aim of this toolkit of digital tools developed under PlantWise Plus is that we um, increase the quality uh, and reach of, of advice to farmers. Um, and as I mentioned before, this toolkit is only like part of the solution. It's not the solution to extension. Um, and yeah, we want to, we're really trying to have this human centered design approach, um, which I know uh, John kind of touched on as well, um, where you're really um, looking at uh, the, the problem that people have and doing the sort of research around that, creating something that works for them, and then um, developing that and delivering it. So um, the sort of the way we do things is um, we don't start with we want to use this technology. It starts with very much the the problem and how is best for those people in that context to solve that and um, making sure we work with the right partners to ensure that that solution um, addresses the problem. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Claire. I know uh, Kavi is very good at uh, pest culture and uh, the application of digital technology is very important in the field of pest culture, especially in the prediction of pest. Uh, digital technology of past culture will have a large market. I believe that through the integration of IER can begin a huge industry. Thank you again. Thank you. And uh, the next agent, we are going to talk Dr. Ikra Ahmad Kahan to give the report. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm grateful to FAO and Qatar for allowing me this opportunity to present a Pakistan uh, a case study of ways to develop AIS through industry university research collaboration. Uh, I'm representing University of Agriculture, Faisalabad, but in Pakistan, we have uh, uh, agricultural universities 
and uh, we are one of the uh, leading ones. Those, those universities work as a consortium. We share our curriculum, we share our R&D projects, we share our uh, uh, student and faculty resources, and we also share services. And as a result of that, we have a kind of uh, uh, national setup of uh, sending out uh, uh, potential uh, innovations for uh, industrial uptake. Uh, as, a, as an example, a uh, few years back, uh, I uh, wrote down a catalog of uh, what we called back then 101 innovation catalog uh, at the University of Agriculture, Faisalabad. We are right now in the process of uh, uh, up, updating this catalog. It's been now five, six years. Uh, since the release of this catalog, uh, in which we had floated about uh, 100 uh, different uh, uh, innovations that were ready for entrepreneurship and pilots, uh, there were more than 50 which, uh, incubation companies which have worked with us. Uh, just, to give, just to give you a few examples of that, uh, uh, we have uh, released a range of biofertilizers that includes uh, 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 some of the microbes which are uh, uh, coated on uh, chemical fertilizers that also includes use of microbes which become systemic part of uh, plant body and then they are uh, they are uh, actually uh, hosted by the seed and then uh, the seeds become vigorous uh, we have uh, uh, signed an MOU with Katas uh, to, to work on uh, uh, tissue culture derived uh, 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 sugarcane seedlings because at present the sugarcane production in the country is based on using uh, uh, canes which are very uh, logistically expensive and they also transmit disease and at present this uh, innovation is uh, picking up very fast. The sugar industry is working with us to invest into tissue culture labs. Um, we are a net import of edible oil seeds and for that uh, there is a requirement that we innovate our cropping scheme. To innovate that cropping scheme, we're working with the uh, uh, oil, uh, edible oil industry and edible oil industry uh, is uh, investing into our varieties which are uh, shattered in duration, which can fit into the cropping scheme so that we could enhance the cropping intensity and find a space for growing uh, edible uh, oil seeds. We're working on introduction of new crops. And again, this has uh, become a very popular uh, new crop, quinoa, which is South American crop. And uh, we have uh, introduced a large range of germ plums and the selected germ plums are being picked up by the farmers. In our country, major industrial crop is cotton. And uh, cotton uh, has repeatedly failed in the country because of uh, longer duration and pest pressure. And so now we have converted the cotton plant uh, uh, morphology into determinate and uh, shorter duration cotton, which could, uh, uh, because of shorter duration, avoid the pest pressure seasons, uh, particularly during the uh, uh, humid part of the summer months when cotton is grown. Uh, we are. Uh, we are also net importer of soybean for our poultry industry. And for that, uh, uh, our, our, our team is working with uh, a group at Sichuan Agriculture University in China uh, for launching uh, a strip crop planting technology, which requires uh, uh, genetics, which we have developed in collaboration with USDA and University of California, Davis. But now the mechanization and the agronomic packages are being developed with the help of uh, Chinese partners, whereby our corn, cotton, and sugarcane fields can simultaneously also be uh, used for growing uh, soybean. Uh, another important import item for our uh, food security is uh, uh, pulses, which includes chickpeas, mung bean, lentils. And uh, uh, in case of chickpeas, our collaboration is again with the uh, ICARDA, uh, USDA and University of California Davis and uh, uh, in this process what we're trying to do is that the traditional chickpea which is grown in this country is rain fed which is also uh, uh, highly highly sensitive to climate uh, vagarities uh, if there is no rain there is no chickpea crops so we have uh, uh, recently developed irrigation responsive chickpea uh, 
uh, germplasm and uh, that is being uh, promoted uh, on, on a large scale. Uh, mechanization is a major limitation in agriculture in Pakistan because we have small farmers uh, uh, communities which are about 90% of the farmers are under, uh, under uh, 12, 12 acres of piece of land and they cannot afford large scale mechanization. So there is uh, a major move to provide them uh, handheld equipment as well as equipment which could uh, uh, improve seeding uh, equipment for uh, 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 chilling the milk, uh, which is solar uh, equipment for uh, distillation operations, which is uh, actually a solar collection uh, of heat uh, and dryers, a range of dryers, which uh, which includes drying of vegetable, drying of uh, uh, fruits. Particularly, there is a huge demand for dates and mangoes, and uh, our, our our solar dryers are. Uh, getting very popular. Our current push is also to uh, upgrade the technologies that includes using satellite image, using precision agriculture tools, uh, using sensors, and uh, and the application of drones. And uh, uh, for that, uh, uh, we believe that uh, uh, there are uh, again very strong possibilities of uh, Chinese collaboration. Uh, on dairy side. Uh, we have a huge uh, burden of disease, particularly mastitis. And uh, uh, our buffalo, actually, which is a uh, water buffalo, which is an animal of, uh, uh, you know, a situation which likes being in water and uh, water situation, the mastitis disease is very common. So to prevent mastitis disease, we have uh, uh, patents and we have shared our uh, patents with the uh, uh, with the startups, and they are uh, selling two streams of uh, uh, control measure. One is uh, the early detection procedures, which is a simple use of uh, detergents, and the other is uh, the 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 vaccines, the consortium of uh, bacteria, which is used to produce uh, vaccines. Uh, in animal feed particularly in poultry, Pakistan is doing very well, modern state-of-the-art poultry. But for cattle and buffalo and for ruminants, the feed industry is still primitive and the farmers are still hooked with the grazing and with the green fodder. So for that, uh, two streams of work have now uh, become uh, uh, industrial operation. One is uh, 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 the silage making. The other is concentrate feeds uh, uh, through uh, similar uh, uh, lines like we do for for our uh, uh, poultry feed. And uh, our scientists have uh, uh, given a range of recipes using uh, uh, farm waste, using uh, industri uh, food industry uh, waste like uh, citrus pulp, uh, mango pulp, and uh, the bakery industry, uh, uh, the, the milk industry waste, which are which is being converted into uh, livestock feed. Uh, on poultry, in addition to modern poultry, one of the uh, uh, important reasons to invest into uh, poultry is uh, to develop backyard poultry. And for that, uh, our breeders have developed breeds which have uh, 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 no brooding uh, season and they produce uh, uh, on an average 200 eggs per year. And this breed, is picking up and there are small uh, hatcheries which are producing uh, uh, these breeds and uh, providing the day-old chicks to the rural folk. There are uh, uh, some of our assessments on uh, uh, hindrances, but uh, that is something that we continue to work to uh, you know, overcome them like trust deficit, making industry aware of our uh, uh, potential to collaborate with them also to incentivize the innovators, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, uh, startups. Uh, and uh, then uh, there is uh, always uh, in the academia a requirement for such funds. Such funds from state do come, but we also continuously lobby for getting funds from the industry and partners. And uh, that comes by way of uh, overhead uh, uh, cost that also comes in the form of uh, direct investment into R&D projects. But at the end of the day, uh, we believe that our innovation system is rising. Uh, we are in very good shape and we would like to seek more collaborations 
with our Chinese partners and also through FAO uh, to improve our innovation system and culture as a whole. Uh, the, the system in place is uh, pretty strong. It needs to perform better. Thank you very much. I have reserved my 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ikra. The case of organic fertilizers, sugarcane tissue culture, and the soybean in the report are instructive and impressive. Although Dr. Ikra could not report online due to an important meeting, he still recorded the video for us. Thank you. Thank you again. Let's move on to the next agent. Welcome, Mr. Martin Akach, to give the support. Mr. Martin. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, uh, I'm happy to join this uh, meeting. And I would like to share with you um, a case study about Aishamba. Uh, Aishamba is a, 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 a mobile phone service, it's a private company in Kenya, and uh, it offers farmers information on farming via mobile phone. And Aishamba was started as um, a backup system to one of the most popular TV show here in Kenya known as Shamba Shepa. And uh, what we do is uh, provide a platform where farmers can share information among us themselves and also talk to experts. Um, so this is a call center support service that uh, is dedicated to serving farmers. Um, so, so, um, like I said, our main role is to connect farmers to experts and um, help them learn from the experts. And then the ultimate goal is that uh, they'll be able to improve their farm productivity. And uh, this is majorly done via mobile phone and where there's need for support, the call center service system allows the farmers to connect to various uh, extension officers on the ground. This is through a uh, partnership uh, via Shamba Shape Up and I Shamba. So um, one of the most interesting uh, things about uh, the industry in uh, sorry. Let me just start in that. Okay. Um, so uh, you'll find in, in Africa and specifically in Kenya, we've noticed that the research recently done by uh, FO indicated that um, whereas the average number of extension farmer, extension worker per farmer is supposed to be 400. Here in Kenya is currently at uh, 1,000 per extension officer. So uh, you realize that there's a gap in terms of uh, the extension officer that exists both from private sector and um, uh, public sector to meet the needs of the farmer. But also very interesting is the fact that um, there is almost 19% uh, in terms of uh, SIM card coverage. So means that uh, in every household, there's a mobile phone and um, at least there's a, people have a way of accessing a mobile phone to communicate to their, you know, their friends, uh, family. Additional data also shows that uh, uh, mobile phone penetration in Kenya subscriber as at 2017 stood at 59%. So on, uh, with a population of 47 to 50 million people in Kenya, roughly over 25 million people have access to mobile phone. And then the study further indicates that 80% uh, of adults own a mobile phone and 35% of them own smartphone and 50% own basic phone. These are very interesting uh, statistics because when we are dealing with farmers, we realize that one of the biggest hindrances in terms of reaching out to farmers is the type of phone that they're using and also um, um, the ability of that phone to uh, you know, solve their problem. 
And then uh, again, just in Kenya, currently there are over different digital technologies in, in agriculture, providing different services such as input access, credit facilities, insurance, ETC. So the Kenyan um, digital space is really growing. And uh, for us at Aishamba, what we, what we uh, do is uh, we look at ways in how digital solution and technology can bridge the gap between access to information by farmers and also information prepared by experts. How can we provide a platform where uh, research organizations such as uh, you, uh, like Kabi, SIAT, can reach out to farmers and you know, inform them about new technology that exists in the industry. Just a bit about Aishamba. So what we do is uh, we curate information uh, from um, different uh, organizations. And uh, this information is created in form of SMS as sent to farmer using the very basic form. So after Shamba Shepherd program, this is one of our you know, backup system. Farmer Shamba Shepherd has almost 9 million audience in Kenya and currently they are moving to Uganda. And uh, after every episode, they'll be, uh, farmers will be asked to send the word joint to Aishamba. Once they send the word joint to Aishamba, they'll be asked to select commodities that they would like to get information on. This is very important because now from there, we're able to know who the, these farmers are. So location is based on geolocation. That's how we profile farmers. And we also profile farmer based on the crops or livestock they're doing and also uh, information in terms of what is their key challenge they're facing as a farm. Um, uh, and uh, information is curated in two different ways. We have automated services where farmers plug in by selecting the commodities they want and every week they get information. And then the other one is question and answer where every day a farmer can send a question, you know, asking a question specific on um, what they want to know. This includes uh, my cows are not doing on heat. My crops have been attacked by fall armyworm. I've seen locusts in my area. And uh, in terms of services that we offer, so we, like I said at the beginning, we are a call center service. So this is where the call center is managed by agricultural experts and partners products are recommended at the call center. Um, this is also one of the way that we work with, um, you know, uh, commercial sector. So if, if a farmer want a fertilizer, and we know a company that is selling fertilizer and we've tested that company through Shamba Chef Up. Then we'll tell the farmer that this is the best um, platform where you can, this is the best product for you to use for your area. Uh, other services that we offer include you know, bulk services. This is very important when you want to reach out to mass number of farmers across the country. And we also help to co co conduct surveys to gauge the impact level of uh, customer service and these surveys are also very important that uh, we are able to collect real-time information. In the past year during pandemic, we work very closely with CRT in Kenya to uh, diagnose the impact of COVID on farmers. Sometimes we outsource the call center service for organization that we want to you know, get further information. Uh, uh, so this is just some of the you know, success that we've had for the last seven years. So we have uh, 500 registered farmers here in Kenya. We've developed 5,000 different aggregates in 42 value chains. And then we have sent uh, 99 uh, million SMSs to farmers. These SMSs include weather forecast, market prices, and also the good agricultural practices that a farmer, a farmer needs to know when they're doing farming. Um, in terms of our coverage, we realize that uh, Majority of our carriers are in the high potential area. These are areas that maybe have electricity or um, you know, the, the infrastructure in those areas should be high. This is because majority of our customers are drawn from Shamba Shape Up TV program. So most of the people who will you know, watch the Shamba Shape Up either have electricity or the, you know, the network coverage there is good. Um, we are really working into filling the blue space and turning them into green. And we, you know, looking at how, how can we collaborate with the research partners, government institutions, and also organize farmer groups at local level to just, to, you know, be able to reach out farmers in the northern area. You'll also realize that um, in Kenya, the places that we have blue where we have below a thousand farmer per county are places that, you know, are in critical need of information 
uh, currently we are facing the drought situation in Kenya, and these are the counties that are heavily affected by drought. So what some of the successful stories that Ashamba has had is um, in 2019, we did a joint uh, application with uh, uh, the Alliance and uh, Center for Tropical and Agriculture in Africa. And uh, the, the program was called Let It Rain. We asked farmers to gauge when it's going to rain in their counties. And uh, this was targeting 10 counties in Kenya. Uh, we realized during this project that most farmers did not know when exactly it's going to rain. So, um, and these are some of the bottleneck that farmers face. They are still using the traditional method in terms of knowing um, when they expect rain. So from this project, uh, 25,000 new farmers joined um, the, the Ashamba platform. And also this is the time when we had more farmers joining the, the platform. These projects strengthen our collaboration between us and research organizations. And currently Aishamba and Siat are working on ways to expand the Leti Train campaign to uh, Uganda and Zambia. Um, we, in addition to just gauging when it's going to rain, we are also trying to come up with a new product of uh, insurance cover uh, targeting uh, moisture level in the soil and also weather forecast constrained by you know, drought or um, uh, too much rain or uh, depressed rainfall. This will help farmers to uh, secure their farms and uh, ensure them against drought or too much rain when we are working with the uh, SEAT. And our role in this project will be to, um, one, provide a platform where farmers can communicate with the experts and to uh, also profile farmers based on their needs and uh, using satellite information from uh, different partners, we can be able to gauge uh, and enable farmers to access information that is uh, curated to solve their farmers' needs. Um, additionally, uh, we during the local situation in Kenya, that is in 2019 and also 2020, Aishamba is one part of the consortium that was working in terms of mapping out how locusts are moving in Kenya and how to mitigate the local situation in Kenya. Uh, and again, uh, uh, part, of our, part of our role in this was to educate farmers about locust, how they look, what to do, and how to report. We provide a platform where farmers could report and we collected information from farmers, relayed that information to you know, National Local Center. And that information was used to get, you know, map out how farmers were moving, how locusts were moving in Kenya. And this could help to coordinate spraying. So uh, the, the major success about this was that um, the local situation came when Ashamba has developed a trust with their about at that time, we were around 400,000 farmers. And that trust is what you know, enables us to work on it to uh, enable farmers to ask, tell us where they have seen locusts and if they have seen what color they were. And, and there we could relay that information back to the government to coordinate spraying. And uh, I know Kabi was also very much involved in this. They had a drone that also monitored the locust movement in Kenya. Uh, so, so just uh, to, to know how this, this works. So one, farmers are located about locust threat and citizen reporting. So citizen reporting is just telling us, have you seen locust put their air? And then we report to um, train agronomist. And then there's validation of the data that's reported by the farmer. There's processing of this data. We disseminate that information um, to in terms of migration maps. And this is shared back to partners and also to public. By public, we used uh, the Shamba Shepherd TV, you know, just to uh, map out how the locust movement. This also helped both farmers and development partners to just to have a more joint effort in terms of mitigating the locust movement in Kenya. Um, and um, if you look at uh, the role of digital space in all this situation, if you look at how Aishamba farmers use the Aishamba platform during the locust and also the pandemic, that is COVID-19, you realize that in 2019, uh, our use was a little bit low. Um, we had only around 16,000 farmers registering and uh, the WhatsApp use was 
about <laughs> But to realize that when we move to um, 2020, the registration of new farmers almost doubled. So we are talking about um, you know 31,000 farmers joining Aishamba. And uh, you realize also that the SMS has continued to increase. In 2019, it was 26. In 2020, it was uh, 53. And now in 2021, we are at 70,000. 70, so this again tells you how the demand for digital space in terms of uh, consumption of digital information is very high considering the fact that when we, when farmers can't move, extension officer can't go to the farm, then the digital space become the bridging ground where farmers can get information. Uh, the digital space in Kenya and Africa at large also is faced by myriad of problems and they include literacy level. Literacy level is one big challenge. Um, uh, so when we when you want to talk to farmers in the rural areas, then you, you need to translate that information. And sometimes if you look at um, how, for example, an SMS is supposed to be structured and if sometimes you translate it, it, it loses meaning. And also, um, People who are using this digital technology also are constrained by literacy level. They might not be able to move, to use it well and understand how to navigate. Our policy framework sometimes is also very strange in terms of we've had situations where we have had to use multiple different numbers. And this is basically because it's policy framework. For example, you can't use a number that is on uh, prepay and also on post pay. So if you want to get to use a number that is post pay, you have to have multiple numbers. Uh, there's also duplication of technologies and um, you'll find one is one institution already have this technology, then the best thing will have been, you know, to strengthen this technology so that you can move forward. But you'll find uh, we are still developing a new technology that is doing the same same thing that's already exists in the market industry. There's low uptake of information at commercial level. Uh, our Aishamba as a service is a paid for service by farmers and also commercial partners. But what you've seen over the last four years is that um, most farmers are not willing to pay for intangible goods. So they see information as intangible goods. And uh, for them to pay, for example, $8 per year to get information on good agricultural practices, weather forecast, market prices, and even be able to access uh, partners at the call center. They see it as such a, a big cost. Not that they can't afford it, but they can't just relate on why they should pay for something they can't see. So uh, we have noticed this and uh, some of the things that we are working on is joint partnership with both commercial partner and research organization. This will help us to you know, collect data, uh, work together, understand the farmer's need and the, the information that we collect from our, uh, our call center in relation to farmer to farmer um, communication can be used by research partners to develop more concise um, information need by the farmers. We are also working on our bundle services. Bundle services is where we, we, we sell to you information, bundle together with, for example, seeds, credit facility, insurance cover, and uh, farm inputs. Um, currently, we are at very advanced stage of developing the Shamba Shepa plan, and this will come in form of uh, farm inputs. So a farmer signed to Aishamba, signed to premium, get information on four different commodities, which can be livestock or crops, and that comes with uh, access to uh, you know, loans up to $300, that is equivalent of 30,000 Kenyan shillings. We are also looking at joint initiative and uh, one of our successful story was joint initiative. And uh, uh, in 2022, we are looking at expanding our territory to Uganda and Zambia. And this will be with uh, the Alliance and Center for Tropical Agriculture in Africa, that is SEAT. And what we've seen is that joint initiative are more productive when we are working with such digital uh, space, either at company level or such level, than when a digital initiative is working on its own. So uh, partners within this space have to you know, look at ways uh, to work together, find a uh, um, niche where you know, their joint initiatives are, are in line with what they want to communicate to farmers. 
So thank you very much for your time. Uh, we are very much happy to have been uh, part of this discussion and uh, we look forward into how can we work together uh, you know, to increase the number of farmer who can access the digital information and also how can we reduce the cost of accessing information by farmers and make that information a little bit clearer, simpler to a farmer and uh, in a manner that the farmer can understand. And just to add on is that um, we are currently working on a new, on a bigger campaign next year where we are focusing on climate change. This is with, jointly with the uh, plant village from Penn State University in the United States. And what is going to happen is we're going to focus more on uh, conservation agriculture where you are telling farmers that we have seen based on the information we have, we have seen that the rainfall in your area will not be able to support base, for example. And we think that if you plant sweet potato or if you plant cassava, you are likely to have better income than when you plant maize because the rainfall in your area will be low. So this is just part of the initiative that how a joint collaborative effort can help to um, bridge the gap in terms of extension service provision in Kenya and Africa beyond. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Very good presentation. The digital technologies mentioned in your report are increasingly being used in agriculture, which is an area with great potential. Thank you. The next agenda, uh, we will welcome Mr. Wang Miao to give the report. Mr. Wang. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Professor Liu. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Good morning or good afternoon. It's, it, it gave me a great pleasure to attend this meeting. I, I think the, uh, I'm the only one come from industry, from the company. First, I will give you a brief introduction about our company and the China Africa Green Agriculture Development Research Center. And then I will present three cases on agriculture innovation system via the uh, integration of industry education research and share with you our and share with you our operate philosophy. Okay. In twenty in twenty six, CDCOC studied uh, its investment in agriculture in Nigeria with the vision of the African countries to develop agriculture, uh, develop agriculture and the building a set from, from, free from hunger and uh, poverty to this effect, and also to offer a one-stop solution for agriculture. We established the Great Agriculture West Africa Limited in Nigeria and the CDCUC Agriculture Development Cooperation Limited in China. Uh, the, the shareholders of CGC Agriculture include the CGC Overseas Limited and the Chinese Academy of Tropical Agriculture Science <clears throat> and other high-tech agriculture companies specialized in seed breeding, irrigation engineering, agriculture machinery and equipment production, agro processing and so on. So our company itself is, is an industry and a research institute platform company. Now, our company have extended his business in multiple countries in Africa, including Nigeria, Senegal, Isapia, Burkina Faso, Guinea, Benin acted. Uh, this is the, our, our agriculture industry park in, in Abuja, Nigeria, and the farm in Cape State. These are our the seed, the seed business in West Africa. Uh, in West Africa. This was the mainly per minute, minute plant demonstration center in Burkina. <clears throat> so promoting the development of agriculture in Africa is a huge 
is is a huge systematic project. It requires the cooperation and the participation of the government's industrial industrial players and the com uh, play, that means companies, universities, and the research institutes. Fully aware of fully aware of these issues in agriculture and the Chinese academy of a uh, tropical agricultural agriculture science advocated each other and established the China Africa Green Agriculture Development Research Center last year, both in China and Africa. Uh, this is uh, the member list uh, of the Ch Chinese part. Next step, we will cooperate with the Africa part and uh, uh, and set up the bran branches in uh, some African countries. This data is also implement is implemented implementation of a, a terms 318 of China Africa Cooperation Format Beijing Summit Action Plan 20, 2019 to 2021. As we as as is well known to all, it is imperative to conduct the cooperation between the industry circles, universities, and the research institutes for the industry development, the tropical agriculture platform has made great, great achievements in this regard to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of the capital building programs and the knowledge sharing. The tropical agriculture platform embraces well the agriculture innovation system. Now, I would give, I would like to offer you three cases as example. The first one is about the the piper seed selecting and the uh, and the technology of integrated control of wort and for the ladder in piper. This project is we cooperating with our company. It cooperating with the. Chinese academic of tropical agriculture science. We we use the Chinese technology to select the 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 hot the, the hot degree pepper pepper seeds and the training to the people the local farmers to planting the the pepper and we buy them from the the the, the farmers and sell in the market. And the second is a, and the second and the second <coughs> pieces is the small scale cassava and young powder plant pro project. This project is we cooperate with our company cooperate with the uh, <coughs> Chinese academic Chinese ac academic of tropical agriculture science too. You know, uh, in Africa, there are many small farmers or uh, small villages. It is a big, a big scale of a modern processing equipment for them. It's the, it's the, it's the, it, it, it's expensive for them, and it's it's hard to to operate. So, we we developed the small scale cassava and young powder plant, the equipments and the the technology. Is is suitable to the small farmers or, or small villages. This project now we have now we have get uh, we, <clears throat> we have get the license from the Nigeria National Agency of Food and Drug Ad Administration. Next 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 step we will put to the we will put onto the market soon. This project, the first table we have finished. Product, we will we will <clears throat> the, the the product we put on the market and uh, and uh, at the same time we training the local people and uh, and uh, offer the equipment in the marketing and the technology service. Uh, we hope we we hope from this uh, use this project improve a improve employment opportunities through the small workshops model and. Uh, and like more, more Nigeria people, villages use this as a small scale project.
processing equipment and the technology. And next, promote the industrial processes. That means the cassava processing or young pod processing industry and <clears throat> in Nigeria and Africa. And the, and the third case is the uh, about uh, it's about the Africa Science and the Technology Backyard Project. This project is our company cooperating with the with, with, with the China Agriculture University. The in twenty in twenty nineteen, China Agriculture University involved five Africa students to study in China from our company. Three from Nigeria and two from Burkina Faso. The first two years they learn in China and in the university. And the third years, they they express uh, the, 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 third, the third the third year, <clears throat> the the practical activities in our company. Uh, after that, they, they will they can they can they can select a working company or work for their countries. This is uh, our company gives the practice chance to these students. So, and from this project, we, we get more information about the local uh, lo local society system. So it's, it's, a, it's a good example, cooperation from the, uh, it's a good example, cooperation between the university and the company. Uh, last but not least, I'm pleased to share with, with you our operator philosophy, which is cooperating with wealth. Innovation empowers development. We are looking forward to cooperating with the members of the Tropical Agriculture Platform. Let us work together <clears throat> to promote the development of the, of the, the tropical or, or sub, subtropical agriculture industry in Africa. Thank you, thank you all for your for for your patience. Have a nice day. Thank you, Mr. Wang. Thank you. Thank you. CGCOC Group is a famous technology enterprise with good practice of IER, and uh, your report is very rich in contents and provide a good case of IER. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you. And uh, the, the last agent, let's welcome Mr. Li Hang Tang to give the report. Mr. Li. Okay, thank you. I can. <laughs> uh, Mr. Wang, Mr. Wang, uh, Mr. Wang, please stop your sharing. Screen sharing. Mr. Wang. Okay. okay. Yes.
。我们共享不了屏幕。是我们共享不了屏幕。Mr. Lee, Mr. Lee, you 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 can. We cannot share your speech. PPT. Okay, he he he,共享了。啊。安静。你就你按这个来讲。OK。他他那边共享。Mr. Lee. Please okay, begin. Okay, okay. Uh, we we create a platform combined with uh, big data, and then my topic is about uh, uh, boost scientific and technological innovation, construction of big data platform for China, national rubber industry chain. Uh, uh, my, my topic includes three parts. They are achievements, contents, and future exploration. And uh, for the achievements introduction, uh, so for the background, uh, natural rubber industry chain combined with big data is to thoroughly implement the relevant policies of the national digital agriculture development and agriculture digitalization planning based on actual needs of national rubber the project intends to build a digital system of monitoring rubber industry chain gathering the information of rubber production processing circulation consumption and supporting moreover uh, as a pilot program, the project provides data monitoring, resource management, early warning service, information release, and other application services for the national rubber industry. Okay, okay, and uh, uh, and we come to the overall overall construction goals. Uh, there are four four goals. First one is strengthening data collection and monitoring ability. The second is to improve the monitoring system of national rubber by big data. And third one is to explore the operating system of national rubber products. The first is to explore the managing system of high quality natural rubber products. And uh, Okay, okay. Come out. This is our one. Uh, six. Please turn to the six. Uh, our our uh, our targets. Our targets. I think you should start from the beginning. From the beginning. Okay, okay. Yes, from because beginning. they can they can look at your presentation. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. For the technique uh, programs, uh, we uh, uh, our topic is about uh, to boost the scientific and technological innovation, construction of big data platform for China national rubber industrial chain, and uh, our program includes three parts. They include achievements, contents, future exploration. Uh, for achievements, for achievements. Uh, for the background, uh, national rubber industry chain combining with big, big data is to thoroughly implement the relevant policy of the national digital agriculture development and agriculture digitalization planning.
based on actual needs of national rubble, the project intends to build a digital system of monitoring rubble industrial chain, gathering the information of rubber production, processing, circulation, consumption, and supporting. Moreover, as a pilot program, the project provides data monitoring, resource management, early warning system, information release, and other application service for national rubber industry. And uh, our overall construction goals include includes four parts. The first one is to strengthening data collection and monitoring ability. The second is to improve the monitoring system of national rubber by big data. The third one is to explore the operating system of national rubber products. The fourth is to explore the managing system of high quality national rubber products. And uh, our targets is faced with five groups. The first one is government. We want to provide choices for macro regulating national rubber industry for research and de development uh, departments. We want to provide data and for consumers, we want to provide traceable rubber commodities. For producers, we want to provide production guidance and market, and, and market information. For companies, we want to provide the forecast of national rubber market prospects and decision support for enterprise development. And we come to the next the slide, please. Uh, come to all contents. Uh, the, for the platform, the platform for national rubber industry chain has initiated a one plus one plus two center system. That is a national rubber industry chain, big data collection system, and the national rubber industry chain, big data center, and, a, and an application service system for, na for national rubber industry chain, relying on big data processing system. And uh, we come to, uh, uh, data analysis uh, system for the it include two parts: uh, data resources collecting and the da big data platform. For data resources collecting, we use three parts. The first one is data collecting criteria. Second is data resources gathering and data sim. For big data, we uh, formed a system, five systems. First one is collecting system, and then storage management system and the processing system exchanging and sharing system and the unified interface service. And then comes next slide. Uh, data collecting, we use uh, four ways of data collection. The first one is agricultural remote sensoring satellite, including the area of rubber production, industrial distribution, disaster data. And second is multi spectral and hyper spectral remote sensing data of rubber collecting by UAV. And we also use environmental data, production data by agricultural IoT and smart devices. For the last, we use softwares, uh, production, circulation, consumption, and other types of data by interactive software, patterns, and third-party websites. And uh, for the uh, base, uh, National Rubble Industrial ba uh, Chain Big Data Platform is now arranged to build three national rubber production information collection and observation stations. Uh, our base uh, is uh, located in three main uh, areas in Hainan, Danzhou, uh, Guangdong, Maoming, and Yunnan, Jinghong. Yeah, this is our base. And then uh, we come to uh, the next is uh, current data resources. We also use data warehouse. We use, we use big data center of national rubber industry chain. Uh, we apply uh, data well, warehouse to solve the storage of massive data resources, which mainly serves data mining and data analysis and assists decision-making at present. We have complete, completed the construction of data spaces of national rubber production, consumption, price, trade, management policy, and, and et cetera. The consumption data is about 5 million. The rubber production data is about 2 million and the space geographic data is about 80. Uh, and we also uh, get the application, uh, provide application service 
build a pl application portable based on business subject database and data mining analysis model, provide BI tools based on visualization and unified data application management tools to form the national robot industry chain resources management. And we also use information analysis on national robot growth, production, consumption, and circulation will be greatly strengthen the monitoring and early warning capabilities of the national robot industries and uh, provide effective decision support. And uh, we also uh, uh, use uh, modeling, the first one, big data functions and the integrated algorithm approach. Uh, we also use, and we use uh, another, uh, sorry, we also use visualization. It uh, includes five parts. First one is rubber. Uh, plantation monitoring and predicting. Second one is production and management system. Third one is consumption system. Fourth is rubber price uh, system. And the fifth is one way rubber industry chain. This is our visualization. And we also have uh, uh, our uh, GIS. We also use GIS application. We tend to GIS, okay? Uh, uh, GIS is applied in remote sensing and uh, aerial image of the data collection area for GIS analysis and a map display by pre-processing and interpreting the data and by comparing the remote sensing images of different years, the change of data is analyzed. Its functions mainly include comprehensive data GIS analysis, regional industrial data analysis, rubber production management, and space analysis. Uh, Robber market management space analysis. This is our big data center. And the next one is our uh, big data center's homepage. And uh, we also uh, create an app. The app name is Xiangsu. Xiangsu app and the National Robber Big Data Center are an organic whole, can which can carry on the direct association with the big data center and which can realize the rubber aspect the information, the policy, the news dynamics, and so on. Information display function, it is convenient for rubber farmers to collect and query rubber information data and classify according to information type. Statistics, different industry main board information, rubber app includes homepage, data filling, service statistics, data summary, and other functions. Uh, for the future exploration, we have four parts. For the first one, we want uh, the system optimization analysis based on spatial granularity data. The second one is for industrial data collection, cleaning, auditing, uh, storage, and application display. We will set up uh, industrial digital channels. For the third one, in view of the analysis needs the information item data support, we will develop the correlation model uh, for the fourth, we uh, fine-grained display of data theme. And uh, we have our prospect. The first one is the data resources. Uh, it includes joint uh, national rubber industry uh, body, coordinated the open sharing of data resources, open the data supply cha channel, accumulate a huge amounts of data. For the second, uh, we have clear requirements. It includes clearly defining the business needs of each major link in the industrial uh, chain, clearly unifying the data structure and uh, protecting data security and uh, uh, privacy. For the data models, we develop more rubber data models, starting multi-dimensional, multi-field participation in the application model, build a common natural rubber database. And uh, uh, this is for uh, my uh, for our program. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lee. And uh, good uh, presentation. Mm -hmm. Give us uh, abundant data about rubber industry. And uh, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, we have completed all the agents of the site event now. The conference has made us more aware of the complexity 
necessity and the urgency of improving the capacity of AI assets. It also makes us more aware of the importance of integrated development of IER. It's hoped that participants will have the opportunity to further strengthen exchange and cooperation and conduct joint research on issues of common interest. Ladies and gentlemen, tropical agriculture scientific research is CATAS internet course. Welcome you to CATAS. After the end of the pandemic, we will give you the warmest reception. Thank you again for your support. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.